Hey what's up guys, welcome to Gabriel Gaprod. Today we are going to see something that many people have requested over the time and it's quite useful in many games. The subject we are going to talk about is how blood and poison can be made with the help of Shadergraph and Photoshop. This project is available on my Patreon page, there's also a lot of packages of effects and shaders and links in the description in case you are interested. So, with that being said, let's see how we can do this. So, the outcome of this effect is heavily depending on the quality of a good texture. So, I'm going to firstly create the shader and then I will show you the steps I took to create a proper blood texture. Alright, so I knew I needed a PBR graph since blood looks really good when we are using normal maps, glossiness and metallic properties. Blood is not opaque, that's why I switched it to transparent and I also turned it on double sided. So the properties of the shader are first off a color in HDR mode with white as default, full alpha and one for intensity. Then I needed the main texture for the blood. So the first thing I did was multiply the texture with the color. And in order to control the color of the blood with a particle system, I knew I needed a vertex color node, which I multiplied with the outcome of color and texture. And finally I connected this to the albedo input. Once I had that set up, I created a new material of the shader just to test things out. And I also created an empty game object, so I can attach a particle system which is going to be for the blood. I rotate it minus 90 degrees in the X so it faces up and then I assign the blood material to the render of the particle system which at the moment had no texture so I needed to create one to keep on testing things out. So in Photoshop I quickly painted these beams of light with random sizes and random places and then I saved this as a PNG and added it to my blood material so I could keep with the shader development. Now what I needed was to add transparency to my shader so I inverted the R channel of my main texture with the Y minus node and controlled the amount I wanted to pass with the power node. I connected the result to the alpha clip threshold so I could control the dissolve amount with the alpha. But since I wanted to control the dissolve with the particle system, I used this setup with a split UV node, with the channel set to UV1, I then inverted the R channel, which will be the X in the particle system. And then I connected this to the alpha input. This setup allowed me to use custom data on the particle system with a vector and then I only need to turn on custom vertex streams and add the missing streams which were tangent, uv2 and the custom data has x, y, z and w. And now the custom data is basically connected to the uv I used in the shader which meant I could use a curve in the x of the custom data to slowly dissolve the blood over time. And here we go, it's looking really nice and it's dissolving the blood with the custom data of the particle system, which is really awesome. Of course I then made some changes to the particle system and adjusted things like start lifetime, the speed, the size, the rotation. I also needed to choose a darker red and a lighter red and also added a tiny amount of gravity too. I also added burst of particles and used the velocity of lifetime so it goes up quickly but then slows down. So one of the most important features a blood shader should have is normal maps so it can interact with the light and it also adds a really cool texture to the blood. Thankfully in Shader Graph there is a node called Normals from Texture which automatically generates a normal map from any given texture and that's really awesome. And then I added some controls over the normals like normal offset and normal strength. And all I needed was to connect this to the normal input of the PBR master shader and that's it. The blood now reacts to the light 
and that gives it really a nice touch and I was one step closer to have a cool looking blood effect. Now that I had this cool shader and the particle system pretty much set up, I only needed to create a blood splash texture. And it may seem harder but here's the steps I took to achieve something cool like this. So I went to Photoshop and on top of a black background and a new layer I started drawing the shape of the blood splash that I had in mind. So once I had that shape I used the Erase tool to form even better the outside and then started to dig in and remove the excess. Then I just pass it in a few spots with the smudge tool to smooth out the texture, make it more curvy in some areas. Then with the erase tool again I started to create the grey areas here and there like craters inside the shape. And this is really important because the shader will work better with areas of grey and white, at least the dissolve part works well. My next step was to create some bright lines around the shape and also in the middle, like if they were rivers. I also added some tiny points of light and more white areas as well. I then passed it again with the smudge tool to smooth out some hard edges. And after that I picked the brush tool to expand the splash and add some thin lines around the shape. I also added some splashes around here and there. And then I added some really bright spots here and there, but only a few of them. So when I came to this point, I noticed that I needed more white in general. So I added a tiny amount of outer glow that would make this texture pop. And this also led me to paint a bit over the top with a white brush, since I knew the dissolve would work better with a texture like this. I made a safe copy of these layers just in case and merged the layer with the background, because my final touch would require me to use the liquify effect of Photoshop. And this tool will allow me to make the texture, well, a bit more liquid obviously, <laughs> and it gives a really nice touch in the end. Once the texture was done, I imported it to Unity, added some size over lifetime, so it starts small in the beginning and grows bigger towards the end, and I also added some rotation over lifetime, and turned on 3D start size, which will also add a bit more of randomness. I also switched the shader to specular workflow instead of metallic and I added the glossiness and specular properties to control in the inspector, which allowed me to do this, basically to control the viscosity of the blood and the amount of glossiness, basically how shiny it will be. And that's basically it, I really enjoyed the end result and I think the blood looks pretty cool and this can be applied in so many things, which is great. To create the poison version, all I needed to do basically was to switch the colors to a toxic green with a little bit of yellow and that's pretty much it. In the end I created another version where I added some distortion to the shader, just enough to make it jiggle, you know? And this is the end result. So yeah, I think that complements really well the whole idea of blood and poison as well. And I'm very pleased with the end result and I hope you also enjoyed this video. So that's it guys, if you have any question please leave it in the comments. And this project is available on my Patreon page in case you are interested in supporting me. All the links are in the description by the way. And I just want to say a special thanks to my super mega patrons which are Alex Dixon, Facundo Perez Botti, Goblin Plague, James Finley, Jens Anderson, Juan Mendiola, Tirita, Warden Studios, and Ioni. You guys are amazing and I couldn't be more thankful of your support. 
I hope you have all enjoyed this tutorial and I really hope to see you in the next one.